Okay, today we have uh, a fun case. It's a placement of a spinal cord stimulator trial. Now our patient, we're gonna go meet him in a few minutes, but he's had surgery a number of years ago and he's developed a post-laminectomy pain syndrome in, in that he has pain that's shooting down his leg. It goes down to his toe. We've done a number of things. We've done like transframeal epidural steroid injections. We've done a RAX catheter technique uh, where we put a catheter and try to break up any adhesions. We've had repeat uh, MRIs and CAT scans. The hardware is still intact, but he just has a horrific neuritis and that's where a spinal cord stimulator can be outstanding now the, the big players in, in this uh, in this field are are really uh, the Medtronic the st. Jude and of course the Boston Scientific today I'm choosing Boston Scientific but the reason I chose Boston Scientific today is 16 contacts meaning I can be off the mark or off the sweet spot it's kind of like a tennis racket right you have to hit the ball right in that sweet spot and over the years what's happened to tennis rackets have gotten bigger that sweet spots gotten bigger the same has been happening for uh, electro technology and it's really complicated technology that's going on in the background but um, here is a, uh, a sample of the um, of the electrode um, 16 contacts almost everybody else has eight contacts now what is the advantage here? So first let's look at how we're gonna place this. We're, his problem, and, and of course this uh, spine really kind of stops at the L1, but we're, we're gonna imagine this a little bit more. Um, his problem and his surgery was lower down, and these are the nerve roots that are being squeezed, so, or irritated. So my game plan is I need to cover this area. I need, I need a big sweet spot coverage of this area. The electrode is really gonna sit up here with the top of the electrode at about T7, or the thoracic seven. Now, how do we get up there? We're gonna see this in the operative video, but it's gonna be, um, uh, functionally, we're basically gonna start really kind of down by the L1 area, which is right up here where this model is ending. I'm gonna kind of uh, gently walk off the lamina, hug the lamina, get into the epidural space, okay? And we're gonna just let this catheter kind of run right up until we get to uh, the spot where we want. And here's, a, here's like an example um, over here where the electrodes are in position, really. Um, you can see five, four, three, two, one. The, the epidural entry is gonna be approximately around there and I'm gonna uh, place it up. Now, it does have a little guide wire that goes in here, which allows me, once I'm in the epidural space, it allows me to kind of steer it, to steer it a little bit left and right, subtle motions. And as I slide, if it's deviating to one side, I can bring it back, back to, uh, to the middle. And we'll see that in the uh, operative portion of this. But now let's go meet our patient and talk with him, map out his pain. And we're gonna meet our uh, Boston Scientific uh, rep, Jared, who's gonna do all the technical details and he's gonna make sure that we have everything going exactly the way we want. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go meet our patient. Uh, his name is Charles. and. Uh, uh, we'll talk to him, and I'll, then we'll talk to Jared, who's with Boston Scientific, and he'll be explaining some of the things. Anyway, well, that's your option. Hey, guys. <laughs> We're doing great. Uh, we have Charles here, who, like we talked about, uh, has had multiple back surgeries, hardware, well, fusion, bone, as well as uh, chemical screws, and he has uh, pain. So we've tried several different things. We've tried transfer minerals, we've tried the RACS procedure, we've tried medication, we've, we've, we've exhausted conservative therapy. Um, Charles, tell me where your pain is. That's, that's when we start. And before I, before I forget, this is Jared. Uh, Jared is uh, our uh, fabulous rep with Boston Scientific who, uh, like we saw earlier, um, he's going to kind of guide me into where to put the, uh, the 16 contact uh, uh, electrode. I'm a little excited about that because that really does provide the sweet spot. It's like we talked about, it's like a giant tennis racket. You know, no matter where I hit it, I'm gonna hit that ball in a sweet spot. Okay, um, I'll have you stand up, Charles. So uh, we marked Charles. I'm just gonna kind of show you some of the markings on the back. So this is approximately where the T7, T8 level is, and that's where I want the tip of the electrode. Now, once again, we're using the Boston Scientific electrode because it has 16 contacts, that's 16, that's crazy. 
So it gives me a tremendous sweet spot. It's like a giant tennis racket. No matter where I swing and hit that ball, it's gonna, I'm gonna hit a sweet spot. So I don't have to be exactly on the mark. He can steer the current and drive this current downwards uh, to the right or to the left or up or down any way I need to. Uh, my job is just to get those electrodes around about here and that makes it so much easier. Okay, so we're gonna enter the epidural space probably around maybe L1 or so. I'm gonna start maybe down here and kind of gently angle up, ricochet off of that lamina and just kind of head straight up. We'll see that. Um, Charles, your pain, just tell me where your pain is again. On the right side. Okay. Right here. Okay. So it's right in the air, and then down the leg. So you can't even bend. I mean, it travels here, it comes across, and goes down to which toe? The pinky toe. The, the, right. pink, the pinky the right toe. So, yeah, so we're really looking at the L5S1 uh, nerve distribution. Uh, Charles, I'm going to have to sit up here. Um, uh, once again, this is Jared uh, with Boston Scientific. He's going to get, get me. Uh, lined up with equipment and everything else and he's going to do the, the complicated testing later he's going to really set the programs probably more than one program i think correct right? right. we'll be able to line them up with multiple programs the day of the trial okay. our system can hold 16 programs okay that's great here's the thing a lot of a lot of patients obviously it's not something that we do right off i mean he's already had rax catheters he's had uh, transfer foraminals he's had radio frequency of the facets to see if that's it and you know, and, and medication. None of these that have been helping. So he's really in a, in a very, he's tried conservative therapies, he's tried everything else, and now this CBD. is the perfect. CBD as well. So this is the perfect option for him right now. Jared, if I have a patient who wants to know about the spinal cord stimulator, there's so many questions that people have for me, right. what can they do? The best thing to do is direct them to our app. It's called My SCS. The patient can download that directly in the office. And what's on there is a lot of information, tutorial videos, frequently asked questions and answers. So that really gives them a um, you know, baseline of knowledge for this procedure. And on there, they can directly input their information where they're located. With that information, it can get sent out to a rep like myself in the area. Okay. So they can immediately be connected with my, someone like myself. Okay. And then also what we've done today with Charles is he's already downloaded the app, saw yeah. some information, yeah. And now we, he's connected to me. So during the trial, he can enter real-time feedback of how oh, he's this feeling. Is, this, is, this is nice. So you can see, uh, once we have the, uh, the electrodes in, he can, he can mark what's going on with him, and it feeds back directly to Directly you. to me. That's great. And the great thing, after he's done a procedure like this, I can print out the report, hand it to the doctor, and say, hey, this is, this is how Charles did today. Now he's sleeping better. His pain is left. This is his goal. He achieved it. And that's tangible information for you. That's perfect, because... Um, during a trial, the way that I do trials, I think the way that most most uh, folks do trials is um, I leave it in for seven days. So I'll have Charles come back in uh, uh, in a week from today, and uh, during that time, you know, Jared's going to be checking on him, and I'm going to be checking on Charles as well. And we just want to know the other things. things. Yes. Um, the other user. We'll cut right there. I'll just go. Back. Mm -hmm. okay. So during, during this uh, trial period, I like to do the trial for seven days. And so during that seven days, Charles is going to be communicating with Jared, who's going to make, uh, you know, make fine-tuning decisions about what we need to do. And I'm going to be communicating with Charles, uh, trying to make sure that, one, of course, make sure the operative site and everything else is okay, and also that you know, we don't have any other, other unforeseen problems or anything else. Just kind of, you know, just be cautious and uh, treat things with respect. And, um, yeah, and absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned the programming before and the trial last seven days. You know, a lot of times when we do that programming initially after the trial, I'll load Charles up with a bunch of programs. We have different types of programs. We give him there's tonic stimulation where he feels the therapy, kind of feels like a massaging, tingling feeling. And there's also different types of silent programs that we can put him on. And if we hit a home run in the first program, we can leave him there. If he's not responding to that program, we can make adjustments in either A, the type of program we're using, or where we're targeting. And at Boston Scientific, we also have a proprietary algorithm, or call our contour algorithm. It's like sonar mapping that's specialized for each patient. So we'll look him up with that as well. That's fascinating. And also, you have to explain to me again about the silent, the silent programs. Right. I mean, it just sounds cool. I mean, let's hear, let's hear what this is. So it's just different types of waveforms. It's what we call self-perception, or you know, silent for patients. And what it does is work in the background, not compared to say a dog whistle. Um, okay. 
a human ear can't hear it, but the dog goes crazy. It's, it's reacting to it. And a lot of my patients go, if I, don't, if I don't feel this program, how do I know it's working? Well, you don't have the pain. So that's the telltale sign. And I usually find about a half of my patients like to feel the stimulation, the other half don't. So we have that option for them. And that's a whole new uh, area uh, that's uh, being looked at in neuromodulation is, uh, is the fact that uh, the, uh, the nerve is uh, sensitive uh, to uh, uh, stimuli or frequencies which does not propagate a signal. So basically what it is is we're, we're again, we're taking advantage of what's called the gate control theory of pain, meaning that pain and, and vibration or other sensation cannot both pass through that, that chemical gate in the, in the back of the spine. And we're bombarding it. Now typically, you know, in the past we've always bombarded with something that the patient can feel and they feel it down. And we may start with that, but the silent programs, we're still bombarding it and driving this sensation through the gate and we're blocking the pain. And that's gonna be fascinating and we're gonna, we're gonna see that. And also the nice thing with our system, we can layer both of those at the same time. So we get two therapies at the same time, we call that combination therapy. So that's another option for dogs. What's that? Yeah, yeah. After we do the trial, yeah. If the disc comes out, then the other one goes out. Well, the permanent goes exactly. exactly, exactly. Now again, this is a trial, so uh, what Charles is asking is, uh, the, the electrodes that we put in today, they are gonna be completely removed in one week, uh, because the purpose of these electrodes, and they're, and they're disposable, the purpose of these electrodes is, is Charles has to tell me that he loves it. And the way I, the way I uh, decide whether or not I'm gonna put permanent electrodes is, Charles has to convince me. I'm like, okay Charles, convince me that you love it. You know, this is this is a you know a, a technically uh, important uh, piece of hardware. You know, there's the cost and everything else associated with patient satisfaction. So Charles has to convince me that this is the best thing that uh, he's ever had. You know. <laughs> In seven days, you'll convince me. <laughs> well, I'll be talking to you during the week. Okay. Everything else good? Any questions? <laughs> I promised him. I, I promised him two, two coffees, and, and not the not the little little plastic uh, cake cup ones. I'm gonna get you get him a real cup <laughs> afterwards. Well, this is perfect. He's having pain now, so that's actually perfect. He's not on any medications right now, so this is a perfect time to place this. All right, we're gonna meet you in the operating room, and uh, we're gonna have some fun. <laughs>